In their entire 40 year history, there was one album above all others that divided the Motorhead community straight down the middle. Or did it? Was this just a misconception that Lemmy unfortunately took to the grave with him that the fans just didn't like it? Hello, welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. I'm Adrian with a face for radio and on today's episode I'm going to be doing a plain talking review of Motorhead's 1983 album Another Perfect Day. So cue the music. I bought this album on the day it came out in 1983 and when I got home I played it and then I played it again and I immediately thought this album is better than the Ace of Spades. Now don't get me wrong the Ace of Spades is the Motorhead album. It's the one that everybody knows and it's, it is brilliant. I am a Motorhead fan. I am they're my favourite band ever and always will be. But technically and musically, I believe Another Perfect Day is the better album. Uh, now there may be uh, people out there that I'm preaching to the converted that have always said that. But I know there's going to be a lot of Motorhead fans out there. They're going to be chucking their empty Jack Daniels bottles at the screen thinking I'm a wanker. But been a new musician as myself. I have been in the recording studio numerous times. I understand why this album is technically the better album of the two. Um, the playing on it is better. In uh, Robo, they had the best guitarist Motorhead ever had, and that is not taken away from Fast Eddie or Larry Wallace or Phil Campbell or Will Wurzel, all fantastic guitarists in their own right, but technically Brian Robertson is head and shoulders above all of them. Uh, as I say, the band, in my view, never sounded better. So with this video, I'm not trying to uh, preach to the converted. I'm trying to convert those who decried this album first time and never gave it the chance or if you've never heard this album before, you've never even seen or heard anything about this album, I'm opening your ears to it for the first time round. So let's kick off with track one in true Motorhead style and we'll go back to the funny farm. Burn. 
So, track one, back at the funny form. This kicks off the album in true Motorhead style. It's bombastic, it's in your face. This is hard rock and roll, as the way only Motorhead could do it. And straight away from the off, you can tell the difference between this lineup and the Fast Eddie lineup. The musicianship is vastly improved, the songwriting is vastly improved, and this song from the off makes you want to listen to the lyrics. Lyrics that possibly in the three or four albums before you'd not really paid much attention to, but this song kicked off everybody knowing what a great lyricist Lemmy was. Uh, Brian Robson's guitar work on this is truly awesome. And I say, you only have to listen to this song to see how Head and Shoulders Above Fast Eddie was uh, okay in Fast Eddie's defence. He did it always want to sort of branch out away from the sound of the first couple of albums but Lemmy always reined him in and said, no, just stick to what you did before. So he was sort of shackled that way. We didn't really uh, get to know how much of a, a great guitarist he was until he did his own Fast Way uh, albums. But with Brian Robertson, uh, like I say, this is just head and shoulders above that. This is why he is one of the best guitarists in the world, bar none. Uh, any guitarist worth the salt will have him, if not in the top 10, at least the top 20. That's how great it is. Um, one of the stories about this is uh, when Robbo was putting the last parts you know, of the guitar work down, he had to have uh, Lemmy's vocal switched off because he just could not stop laughing <laughs> at the lyrics. He said they were just hilarious lyrics and he could not work properly with them going on in his ears, so he had to play along to the song without the lyrics on. Second song, Shine. Uh, this was the second single released from the album. And again, this is awesome, in your face, motorhead rock. And this takes the band up to that next level where they were already being touted uh, uh, in many of the polls that you got that they were the best band. This album finally shook off that best worst band tag that ever always seemed to be to be shackled to them. This showed that Lemmy and um, I nearly said Phil then, yeah, Filthy Animal and uh, Robbo together wrote awesome rock songs. Just uh, mentioning Phil Taylor there, I don't think he's ever played better drums than what he did on this album. They are absolutely all awesome. You just listen to him. Uh, he's got the double bass drum down to an absolute T. He first uh, developed that for himself, of course, on the Overkill album. But this uh, this is the album, I think, that uh, shows you what a great drummer Phil Taylor really was and a very, very underrated uh, drummer as well. Shine, absolutely awesome single. And I think what a lot of hardcore Motorhead fans didn't like about it was how accessible this song made Motorhead to the mainstream. Because beforehand, Motorhead was looked on as this dirty, greasy Hells Angels biker band that, oh no, my little Timothy is not going to go and see. And then they were releasing quality quality songs like this, and it made them sort of open up to the mainstream a little bit more. Uh, and I don't think that's I think that's what a lot of uh, the hardcore uh, original lineup fans didn't like. But Shine, absolute fantastic song. Okay, let's move on. Track number three, Dancing on Your Grave.
So, track number three, Dancing on Your Grave. Love it or loathe it, without it, there wouldn't be a Sepultura. Now, that's not me saying that. That came from Max Cavalera. He said that Another Perfect Day was the first album we heard. As soon as you heard it, Love Mo's Head, and one of his favourite songs of it was Dancing on Your Grave. And that sort of links in with the name Sepultura as well. So linking the two together without this song, there'd be no Sepultura. OK, absolutely love this song. It shows you how melodic Motorhead could be and still stay heavy. You don't have to play at a million miles an hour. You don't have to down tune to Z. This song is truly awesome and it is one of my favourites from uh, the album. Um, I, speak, I think it speaks volumes that in later years this song was reintroduced into the set with a couple of others from the album. Absolutely love it. It's fantastic melody. The guitar work on here is awesome. I don't think Brian Robson really did uh, play much better after this. I think he does most of his best guitar work on this album and it's absolutely awesome. That is one of my favourite tracks. I could listen to that track all day. Next one up, number four, is Rocket. Now this is your straight ahead Motorhead's um, rock song. Uh, if I had to pick probably a weakest track from an album, if you put a gun to me, I'd say which one are you going to say is the weakest one? I think I'd say this one. It's it's not a throwaway riff by any means, um, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be. Uh, as, as strong as the rest of the songs in the album, but it's still a brilliant song, fantastic, absolutely love it. It's nice up tempo, uh, almost uh, swing beat to it. Uh, typical Motorhead, what can I say? Absolutely fantastic. Okay, next track up will be track five, and this would close uh, the A side on the vinyl. And this one is One Track Mind. Side A on the vinyl, track number five, one track mind. Now this one is the dirtiest and sleaziest sounding track on the album. Uh, it's not on tempo, it's really laid back. Some fantastic blues playing from Ravon on this one. And Lemmy's uh, vocals, the, uh, the lyrics on this, as humorous as ever. Absolutely awesome track, love this in a great way to end side A. Track number six is the title track of the album, Another Perfect Day. Uh, I'd say almost semi-autobiographical for Lemmy this one. 
this is uh, another sort of mid-tempo uh, rocky one absolutely awesome fantastic drumming in this fantastic solo uh, it's a great song all round and uh, a fantastic way to open side b of the vinyl uh, of course on the cd there's only one side so that would just be track six okay so track seven and we're back into uh, lemmy's favorite lyrical topics as we go marching off to war tempo again is track seven and marching off to war and this is one song that uh, I think uh, they, sh they should have played more live in later years uh, when they were picking songs from this album uh, to redo absolutely love this song like I said lyrically it's back to where uh, Lemmy felt most comfortable and singing about the horrors of war and how when you come back you're a different person absolutely love this track it's fantastic track eight i got mine this was released as the first single from the album and i absolutely love this song i think it's the the best album on the track absolutely love it and this was the eye opener that made everybody sit up and listen and then appreciate what a great band motorhead were and um, any band that had uh, Mofred supporting them. Uh, I don't think they wanted to go on after him uh, after listening to this. Uh, absolutely awesome song, awesome lyrics, best guitar work for me uh, from Robo on the album. Absolutely love it. Fantastic choice as a single. I don't think they could have picked a better single off it. But uh, I got mine. If you only listen to one song off this off this album, make sure it's I got mine. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, the sleeve. On the 12 inch single which uh, I've got uh, I don't know why but <laughs> Phil uh, I don't know if it's like one for the ladies or whatever but it looks like some kind of Mexican bandit on there uh, <laughs> it always, always made me chuckle that photo but now this this song I got mine absolutely brilliant absolutely love it and uh, it's a song that I've been in many a covers band screaming at them that I wanted to do it but uh, you know nobody was interested so my next next band if I get one up and going uh, pretty soon uh, we're, we're definitely going to be doing this one absolutely love it so on we go track number nine and Tales of Glory <laughs>
so track number nine tales of glory and this is really up tempo motorhead one and lyrically this is absolutely brilliant uh let me on top form with this one you're basically saying along the lines of don't give me a bullshit because i know you're telling <laughs> you're telling lies it's a load of crap and i'm not going to fall for it uh again this showed motorhead fans how, how much they advanced songwriting wise and music wise and playing and the whole the whole shebang this was showing that motorhead were a quality band they were before they were a fantastic band before but this had taken them up the next rung of the ladder in my view and tells of glory one of the better songs on the album i absolutely love it track number 10 is die you bastard um this song very much in the vein of the hammer which closed the ace of spades um this is proto thrash if you want to call it that i think uh, metallica and megadeth might have nicked a couple of ideas from this song absolutely awesome and again lyrically it's uh, lemmy having a bit of fun with the words and i say phil's drumming on this is fantastic he he become leaps and bounds ahead of the drummer that he had been on the previous albums uh, absolutely love it and that would have closed the vinyl album but of course if you've got the cd like i have uh, you get the bonus tracks these were b-sides on the singles uh, you've got turn you around again absolutely awesome song that should have made it onto the album i think i'd as soon have had that on than rock it myself so i think that that song is awesome and then you've got two live songs in i'm your hoochie coochie man and don't need religion so there you go another perfect day am i going to get lynched for this are people going to tell me that i've got my hat on too tight more than likely but i don't care it's it's my opinion i'm welcome to it i'm going to stick to it i think this album is up there with the ace of spades i think it's the better album of the two technically and uh, songwriting and musicianship i think it's head and, head and shoulders above ace of spades but ace of spades is the classic album and it will always be on the top of the pile i know that i'm a motorhead fan you don't have to tell me that and okay so with all that in mind i'm going to give motorheads another perfect day album like i said when i did my uh for love of motorhead series video this one all day every day till the day i die you bastard <laughs> i'm going to give this five evil edners So there you have it, Motorhead's 1983 album, Another Perfect Day. Was it as hated as what uh, Lemmy seemed to think it was? I don't think it was. I know there's a lot of, of people have gone back to that album and appreciate it more now than they ever did. And they finally realised what an awesome album it is. I personally loved it from day one. I've made no it, you know, hidden from anybody about that. I absolutely loved it. And I would have loved to have seen at least another album uh, with this lineup because I think uh, they could have gone to bigger heights than what they did. Um, this was the last full studio album on Bronze before Bronze folded. And I know they had a hell of a lot of uh, wranglings with the Bronze label after that. But uh, for me, I, I absolutely love this album. So you know if you've not listened to it ever please give it a listen because you will be greatly surprised uh if you've never listened to a motorhead album before because you think this loud noisy horrible band give it a listen because you, i think you'll be pleasantly surprised and if you've not listened to this from the day it was released because you're that motorhead fan and you know fast dead is your man and nothing else is then please open your ears to it because you you know you're denying yourself a truly awesome motorhead album 
Okay, so hope you all enjoyed that one. Many thanks for watching. Uh, please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel. It's very much appreciated. And share like my videos too. Um, feel free to comment how you feel about the album or the video in the comments below. I always try and get back and answer to as many as I can. Don't forget as well that you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And just, just remember, this is my point of view on the album. Everybody's got their own point of view, so please let's not get nasty about it. Uh, just leave all that to all the chavs and all the R&B crowd. Let them kick nine bells out to each other. You know, we're in this together uh, as rockers. So there you go. So with all that in mind, many, many thanks for watching. It's very much appreciated. And here's seeing you all again on the next episode of The Adrian Bauer Project.